So there's a new show coming out on Amazon called Has Been Hotel. And uh, I've watched some of the materials. I've watched a little bit of the pilot episode. It's got 92 million views on YouTube. And it's generating some buzz because uh, more religious individuals, I'm not saying every single person, but there's some controversy around the premise of the show. That is to say, the show venerates demons. It actually uses a premise based in uh, uh, religious Abrahamic uh, biblical teachings, corrupts them as a lot of modern things do, and basically creates this premise where Lucifer was a playful trickster who was thrown out of heaven because he just wanted to have a good time, but the angels wanted to order. So they cast him out, and then, you know, Lucifer goes down to Lilith. Yeah, Lilith, not Eve. Lilith, the first wife of Adam. Lilith, Lilith, of course, was cast out because she would not listen to the man. That's literally what they say. And then uh, uh, Lucifer is like, here's knowledge. And they become demons. And then, you know, heaven's all pissed off. And so the show is, uh, I would say, a corruption of biblical teaching. It's an obvious thing. It's a fictionalized show that uses biblical teaching to create characters casts many demons in positive lights. But I think we should break down what this shows because I find all of it very interesting. This show is not generating some kind of mass right wing controversy or anything like that. There's not a bunch of Christians and Catholics condemning it. There's just some commentary talking about whether it's appropriate for kids, whether it will incidentally attract kids to learn the wrong things about the Bible or create misconceptions. And I think the bigger picture here is that this is popular. This is it's got 92 million views. The creator on uh, uh, on YouTube makes a bunch of these cartoons that are uh, uh, really well made and get tens of millions of hits. And people are watching this stuff. So the big takeaway from a show like this that basically, as they say, venerates demons. A lot of movies do. Don't get me wrong. I think that the point here is if you want to counter this and produce content that you think would do good things, you have to make good content and you can't just sit here and complain about it. You need to push back and win the culture war. Now, I I have this tweet here from Kruktos. I found it very interesting because uh, he tweeted, the propagandists are now actively making movies to promote the veneration of powerful demons, in this case, Lilith, the patron demon of feminism. Corporations like Amazon and its media arm Prime are working with the devil. They are the enemy. You know, I don't think it's the most important story in the world, but I do think it's rather interesting. What does it mean? Well, let me play for you the trailer and I will comment and critique it. But I will start off by saying Sound of Freedom is not only available on Prime, it is actively promoted on Prime. So I was at um, was a hotel or something, it might have been an Airbnb, and there was a hotel. And they had Prime available because I've, I've been trying to watch Yu Yu Haku show anime. And uh, I turned it on and Sound of Freedom's there. And I'm like, this is awesome. Sound of Freedom actively promoted. I don't think Amazon saw this cartoon and thought, ooh, Satan and Lucifer, let's venerate demons. And I think taking this approach is actually going to be detrimental to the right and to those who want to give better messages to young people. For the average person who would find themselves as like atheists or whatever, they're not going to watch this and care at all about it. But I will say this. Christianity is having a hard go of it when shows like this misrepresent what the Bible is actually trying to teach people. And this will be the basis by which many people form their beliefs around these religions. I hear these uh, these complaints a lot or conspiracy theories. They say that the... Uh, uh, Hollywood and the, and the government, it's a conspiracy theory, by the way, they say, they, they, say, they say men in black, for instance, they make these movies so that if you ever tried to actually tell someone that it happened, they wouldn't believe you. Let me give you a better example. After 9-11, there are people who reported that they were like lying in a, I think one, one person said they were lying in a hotel, or I'm sorry, a hospital bed after being injured. They had witnessed things and men in black showed up and told them they saw nothing and to shut it. And of course, the men in black doesn't mean alien fighting superstars. It meant guys in suits from an undisclosed intelligence agency were saying, don't repeat what you saw for national security reasons. And of course, that could just be FBI. It could be uh, uh, Pentagon intelligence. It, men in black doesn't mean aliens or anything like this. But the conspiracy theory goes, they make a movie called Men in Black because then when you say, some men in black showed up and threatened me, they go, oh, geez, you're a nut job. That was a movie. 
Okay, so maybe, I don't know, whatever. But that's the general conspiracy thing. I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying some people claim these things. Now, let's play this trailer, and I'm sure uh, a lot of Christians will get will get angry about it. And I, I think so, because the way it misrepresents the biblical teachings. Let's play. Once upon a time, there was a glowing city protected by golden gates known as heaven. It was ruled by beings of pure light, angels that worshipped good and shielded all from evil. Lucifer was one of these angels. He was a dreamer with fantastical ideas for all of creation, but he was seen as a troublemaker by the elders of heaven, for they felt his way of thinking was dangerous to the order of their world. So he watched as the angels began to expand the universe in their ways. From the dust of earth, they created Adam and Lilith. Okay, so I'll pause right there and and we'll talk about why people are upset. First, the angels did not create Adam and Lilith. And certainly Lilith, I don't even believe is actually a part of biblical teachings. Uh, but I'm not I'm not some religious expert. Uh, but the point here is right off the bat, the trailer is basically saying the established order is not all good. And trying to keep out this person's ideas. Oh, how could they? The general idea that we've been seeing from the modern left is that the established order should be broken and destroyed. Now, I'm all for reform. You know, if some dude is throwing fireworks around or whatever, there may be a reason why the angels did not like what he was doing, because he's throwing fireworks at people or throwing them in the air. It's like, dude, chill, man. I'd like to point this out. As they say, he dreamer was a dreamer with fantastical ideas for all of creation. And you see him throw fireworks into the air and he's smiling and laughing. Yeah, fireworks are beautiful. They can be great. But let's take this literally. The angels are like, dude, stop throwing fireworks. And he's like, oh, but they're pretty. It's like, OK, yeah, well, you get my point. I'm, I'm kind of being a dick, but let's play more. But he was seen as a troublemaker by the elders of heaven, for they felt his way of thinking was dangerous to the order of their world. Yeah, the order. So he watched as the angels Perhaps began to expand the universe the in their ways. From the dust of earth, they created Adam and Lilith, equals as the first of mankind. But despite this, Adam demanded control, and Lilith refused to submit to his will. She fled the garden. Drawn in by her fierce independence, Lucifer found her, and the two rebellious dreamers fell deeply in love. Together, they wished to share the magic of free will with humanity, offering the fruit of knowledge to Adam's new bride, Eve, who gladly accepted. But this gift came with a curse, for with this single act of disobedience, evil finally found its way into Earth. With it, a new realm of darkness and sin, and the order heaven had worked to maintain was shattered. As so I, I want to pause right there. I think it's actually interesting. I don't think this, this uh, uh, show is intended to insult or deride or even get things wrong. I, I do think it's funny that it's like, Adam demanded Lilith you know, adhere, you know, follow the man. But she was a fierce, independent whammon. Okay. But they point out the actions undertaken by Lilith and Lucifer brought evil into the world, destroying order. Eh, not good. Punishment for their reckless act. Heaven cast Lucifer and his love into the dark pit he had created, never allowing him to see the good that came from humanity. Only the cruel and the wicked. Ashamed, Lucifer lost his will to dream, but Lilith thrived, empowering demonkind with her voice and her songs. And as the numbers of hell grew, so did she's a literal demon. Did its power? Threatened by this, heaven made a truly heartless decision that every year they would send down an army, an extermination, to ensure hell and its sinners could never rise against them. But Lilith's hope remained, and her dream was passed down to their precious daughter, the princess of hell. Don't worry, mom. I'll make you proud. And so basically the, the premise of the show is that, did I, oh, what did it do? The premise of the show is that she's trying to reform all of these sinners so that they will not be exterminated worry, by heaven. And there's a, there's a lot there. There is a, uh, a, a a lot there in that uh, premise that has people upset. But there are some really funny posts that I can read about this. So the first thing I want to say, when I saw a post like this and I see people talking about this new show, it's coming out, I think, tomorrow. My first response is, yeah, I don't, I, I don't care all that much. 
you want to make a show where you've got like a Satan worshiping feminist or whatever. I'm not saying that's what the show is, but you want to do that like, OK, fine, I'm not going to watch it. But you pop over to their YouTube channel and certainly a lot of people do this. Uh, this creator on YouTube, massively popular with a billion views, nine million subs, making cartoons that get tens of millions of views. And for the most part, I'd say it all looks legit. You know, this is this is a this is a popular prominent uh, uh, person who's producing content that people want to watch. You want to win? Complaining about it ain't going to do nothing for you. You got to make better content. That's really it. It's an influence war. Right now, you have Prime Video launching Has Been Hotel. You also have Prime Video launching Sound of Freedom. So we have our victories. And I honestly don't even think Has Been Hotel is all that bad. Look, it's a show that is not for kids. It is, uh, I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like it. But you're allowed to like other things. You know, you know what? I, I love what happens when you do stuff like this. I'll say something like, I watched the pilot. I, I bounced around. I didn't like sit, sit through the whole thing. And I was kind of like, some of the jokes are cringe, not really my kind of, uh, uh, of show, not interested. But uh, I certainly think you are allowed to like things. So uh, no beef. If you like something I don't like, you know, go ahead. I, I'm not a big fan of country music. I know a lot of people like country music. I'm not going to sit here and be like, country music shouldn't be allowed. I think it was funny when you had the Daily Wire guys being like, rap isn't music. I'm like, oh, come on, dude. People are allowed to like things. You don't have to like it. I can certainly understand why there's other kinds of music you do like. But some people like rap. I think there's some good rap. I mean, take a look. You know, it's a, you know, it's a great song is um, Handlebars. Do you know that song? That's a rap song. And it's, it's thought provoking. It's interesting. And they have the BLM fist as the bad guys in the music video. But that's my point. We got to win a culture war. It means we have to be persuasive and produce good culture. Going online, and I'm not saying this is what everyone's doing. I'm just saying, in the event you don't like what they're teaching, saying Lilith is fierce and independent, is going to help demons or whatever, and you don't like that stuff, you need to make the inverse. You need to make a show just like this in the same style with similar humor that doesn't use crass cringe humor, and the bad guy is the devil. How about that? Look. Amazon Prime allowed Sound of Freedom. We have those victories. It also allows Has Been Hotel, which is, I don't think the people behind it are secretly being like, how can we make a show that worships demons? <laughs> I think they were like, wow, take a look at this YouTube show that's got 90 million hits. We should buy this and make more of it because it has 90 million hits. So the person who makes it doesn't have the same path to monetization as, say, uh, Amazon does. Amazon says, if we buy this, we can get those 90 million people, which I honestly don't think 90 million. I, 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 look, I'm going to say this. I don't think the number's real. I say mostly real, but I got to be honest. 90 million people. OK, I'm pretty sure the adult population of this country didn't watch it. You then got 600 or so million across Europe. How many of them speak English? A lot of replays. Probably people probably watched the episode more than once or maybe came back to it later. So if we're looking at like two thirds, maybe there's 60 million people who watched it. Hey, man, that's massively popular. It went viral. It was watched around the world and people watched it. I can certainly respect the show as popular. My point to you is if you're upset watching this and even if the show intentionally or unintentionally venerates Lucifer and Lilith, the point is you win by building culture yourself. And we've seen those victories. I'm not a big fan of this kind of stuff. Like me personally, I'm never going to make a show where it's like an angel in heaven was working really hard to like, imagine if you made the inverse of the show, an angel in heaven is convinced that even though people have been cast to hell, there still is an opportunity for them to reform and repent. It's kind of like the premise of the good place, but they don't want to get super religious with it. Imagine if it was an angel that did it. And the bad guy was the devil being like, you won't take sinners from me. You could make a show where it's literally Lilith and Lucifer trying to convince, and this makes more sense, the sinners to embrace free will and the reckless behaviors around it and not to give in to the, the desires of an angel. Here's my premise. An angel goes to God and says sinners can be reformed even after they've already gone to hell. And I know, I know people are already saying, but this goes against the teachings. And this is my, my point is, if you, if you were like a show like this has no idea about biblical teachings or what it even means, it makes, it implies there is no God. It's just angels. It implies the angels are actually evil and authoritarian. Not, you know, but if you actually watch the pilot, it's really crass. 
But uh, there is a there is a really funny joke I want to show you. I'm fighting a sneeze right now. There's a funny joke someone made that uh, actually says the show is really offensive, which I'll show you in a second. But my point is, what if the show was an angel goes to the highest choir of angels or whatever? Is that the seraphim? I don't know. Don't know enough about that stuff. All I did was see dogma one time. And he says, I know that we've cast many of these sinners to hell, but I truly believe that some of them can be repented. They have an attorney to do so. And the angels are like Lucifer, Satan, whatever. They'll never allow you to take sinners from his domain. And so the bad guy is the devil, right? You could do it that way. I'm just saying make culture, make content. And I, I, I think it's silly that people get all worked up about this stuff. I do think it's kind of funny, to be honest. But there was re- one really funny post that I want to point out. I don't know if I have it pulled up. Do I have it pulled up here? Uh, Captain Criticize said, what I like most about Hell of a Boss slash Has Been Hotel, is that Hell of a Boss is another show, is that it's secretly based by confirming that gays go to hell. <laughs> oh, jeez, dude. So actually, the show is deeply offensive. And the reason why the show is offensive is because, yeah, a component of it is that the people in hell, like, they're gay. And one of the characters... In, in the pilot or whatever, offers to engage in, in, in gay sex. And it's like, are you trying to imply that that puts them in hell? They do. I think there's something interesting here. This is separation of a generation from their Christian roots. So they understand these things. They hold these ideas. But when they, when they express them, they come out broken. Let me give you a better example. I was uh, listening to some music. It's, it's listen to music. Listen to listen to hit songs, and you'll notice they say things like uh, dying. Uh, how about this? Uh, the freshman. We never thought we would die for these sins. Sins I know goes back to uh, ancient Rome and the idea of of wrong and bad. But sins in a, in an American context from a Christian nation has to do with sin, a Christian concept, and it is still deeply ingrained in our views of the world, the idea of committing a sin, a, a bad act. I know it can predate, uh, many, much of these ideas do predate uh, Christianity specifically, but for a Christian nation that overwhelmingly viewed sin in the context of religion, that's my point. So you take a look at this, and when they make a show about going to hell, whether they realize it or not, whether they're trying to be offensive or not, they put gay people in hell. And the premise is, this is where people go. Now, now, now think about what that means. The guy in hell who offers to engage in gay activities. I'm not going to read too much into that. Try to keep you fam- family friendly. What's what's the point? They're saying that heaven wants to go and once a year kill a bunch of people in hell. Well, they're already dead, though, aren't they? OK, fine, whatever. There are demons in hell and it's overcrowded. So heaven wants to purge them. The character uh, Lilith's daughter says, I can reform these people. And if they're reformed, they can go to heaven. And I'm like, so a component of people repenting to go to heaven, you see, they have a general understanding. I don't think the creators are intending to be evil or malicious or worship demons. And I think the reason they put gay people in hell is because in their worldview, they are detached from Christian moral tradition, but it's still threaded into their their psyche. So, of course, they put a bunch of gay people in hell. I am not saying gay people go to hell or should. I'm saying they think it. And it's kind of an interesting Freudian slip, I guess, in making a show where they would do something like that. And at the same time, making the premise be, even though it is a corruption of biblical teaching, that you can repent and go to heaven. Now, I am not a biblical scholar. I'm not going to sit here and tell you about I I don't know about this stuff. I can only tell you that I find it interesting there is concern about a show like this. And the only thing I personally care about is, well, while I do care about the fracturing of uh, moral tradition uh, to a great degree, I don't know enough about Abrahamic religions, and I am not Christian myself, though I do believe in God, that I, I, I don't get bothered by this. I think it's interesting. More so, I think it's fascinating that the pilot has 90 plus million views Obviously, it's been rewatched numerous times by a lot of people. It's a musical. People really like it. I'm not saying everybody does, but a lot of people do. So much so that Amazon wanted to buy it. And what I see here that I find so interesting is we need to have sound of freedom. So take a look at this. 
when 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 you see a show like this and you're and and you're upset and you're like they shouldn't be making this stuff it's a cartoon they say it's for adults but you know kids are gonna watch it that's why they got rid of Joe Camel because they were like yeah it's for adults but come on it's attract it's for cartoons are for kids although I don't think that's necessarily true because Family Guy is certainly not for kids the point is you have to ramp up the production and win a culture war through merit that's kind of the takeaway I have from this don't like the content okay. You're not going to win through complaining about it. And not, again, not saying everybody is. I just see this and I'm like, man, I wish we had cartoons of this caliber competing with and beating these shows. Why couldn't the show be the inverse where a good angel is trying to reform people in hell? And you could do adult humor and have adult comedy and do all that stuff. We got to make it. We got an opportunity. What's happened right now is Prime Video saw a massive audience and wanted to buy it. Well, while you may be complaining about Prime Video, Prime Video buying a show like this, Sound of Freedom is massively successful and promoted on Amazon as well. So we're winning in a lot of ways. This is one of the victories for those that don't quite understand Christianity, don't quite understand the moral traditions. And you may be thinking it is a corruption of the teachings and it will cause problems. Some of the arguments made by people I see who are upset about it are saying that young, they want young people to believe biblical teachings. I'm not asserting that by all means, if you do. The problem is if they see a show like this, it's going to be a negative influence and it's going to corrupt their view of what the Bible actually teaches. My response, meritocracy, make something better and win. I don't know. Why is it that a show like this gets so many views on YouTube? Perhaps the culture is fractured to the point where there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, so many young people just like the ideas of demons and all that stuff, and they want to embrace it and have fun with it. So it is what it is. You need to find what will be attractive to your generation, you know, and the young people who are already agree with your worldview. And maybe that fracturing is only going to get worse. My final thought on this, just for everybody who's complaining about the veneration of demons, dude, there are so many shows that have already done this. I don't understand why it's like shock that Prime Video has a show like this. Sabrina the Teenage Witch is literally about her working for the devil. There's tons of shows going back decades where people are working for the devil. Spawn. Spawn works for the devil. Um, how about uh, Ghost Rider? Like, we get it. Uh, I think, how about uh, uh, Etrigan? He's a demon. And it's, it's uh, uh, you know, DC Comics. There's tons of stuff like this throughout all of our media. If you want to win, you need to make stuff. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.